Hello and welcome to another video in which we seek to analyse and solve ordinary differential equations amongst other things. Now, like I said in the last video, I was going to prepare a video um, in which we solve a linear ordinary differential equation, uh, but one that is normally a bit harder to solve, particularly with one with um, non-constant coefficients, so in this case variable coefficients, and by that I mean we've got a t squared here, a t there, um, and of course this, this is what is known as um, uh, an, a Cauchy-Euler equation, so the Cauchy-Euler equation is usually of the form t squared x double prime plus t x prime uh, minus x equals zero. Uh, the signs will be different for different um, uh, Cauchy-Euler equations, and of course you will have perhaps um, other coefficients mixed in there, like you might have um, a two here and a three there and a five there or something like that. But in this case, this is a particular um, Cauchy-Euler equation uh, for which we're actually given um, a solution. Now, that first solution um, is x equals to t. And first of all, we're going to prove that x equals t is a solution of equation one, just to make sure. Now, um, we know that x equals t, so x prime equals one, and x double prime equals zero. So if we substitute x equals t, x prime equals one, and x double prime equals zero, back into equation one, then we can find out whether the left-hand side is equal to zero, which is what we want, because this right-hand side is zero. The left-hand side must match the right-hand side. So x double prime is zero. So we've got t squared times zero uh, plus t times x prime. x prime is one. And we've got minus x, but x is t, so it's minus t. And that comes out to be equal to zero plus t minus t equals zero. So uh, x equals t is a solution. Now to solve this Cauchy-Euler equation, we're going to use the Ronskian, which is what we're asked to do. Um, and of course, to use the Ronskian, we must have one solution available. We must know one solution. Um, we, we either find it by trial and error or by an analytic method um, before we can proceed. If you can't find a solution either by trial and error or the analytic me method, then it's a lot harder to solve equations like equation one or, or even completely different equations with non-constant um, coefficients. And then you'd have to re um, revert to numerical methods or series um, or, or, or possibly other analytic methods to solve those equations. But in this case, we know that x equals t is a solution to equation one. And in um, the first video that, that we did a short while ago, earlier on today, in fact, which has now been posted, I said that the Ronskian uh, was equal to e to the minus integral of p dt. Now, what I should have said, I did actually say um, to begin with, I did actually say that it's equal to a e to minus integral of p dt. Uh, but then I um, erased the a and I think I mentioned that um, I, w I actually wasn't sure. I couldn't remember whether you put a constant in here. Well, you do. You do put a constant in. Um, and that's because when you're dealing with second order equations like this, um, it helps in forming that second 
constant of integration. Without it, you um, you wouldn't get that second constant of integration. Although we did in the last video, because I put the constant in here, for example, and called it x equals at. I think that was a different solution. It was probably something like x equals a e to the t. Um, so if I put a constant in here now and said x equals a t, um, it would probably be OK if we didn't use the constant here. Uh, but that wouldn't be the correct way of doing it. So apologies for not being absolutely clear about whether or not constant was included in the last video. But we're rectifying that now and we're putting a constant in here. And that's how we're going to proceed. So x equals t is a solution to equation one and the Ronskian is equal to a e to the minus the integral of p dt. Uh, but what is p? Well, we've got a times the exponential uh, to the power of minus the integral of p dt. Well, p is quite simply uh, found by rearranging equation one. So, first of all, um, we'll, we'll just get rid of that for now and leave the Ronskian there. And we'll go on to another page. So, we've got uh, t squared x double prime plus tx prime minus x equals zero. So, what we do is we rearrange equation one by dividing throughout by t squared, okay? So we divide equation one throughout by t squared to get, and I'll write this in green, so we've got x double prime plus one over t x prime uh, minus 1 over t squared x, and that's equal to 0. Um, and we'll call that um, equation 2. So, um, like I said, um, the Ronskian is equal to a e to the minus the integral of p dt. Well, p, which is just this term here, ignoring the minus sign for now, p is just equal to this plus 1 over t. So the Ronskian here is equal to a e to the minus the integral of 1 over t dt. And so the Ronskian is equal to, I ought to revert to um, a different colour, I think. Uh, we'll stick with green for now. So the Ronskian, uh, no, actually we'll have black. Uh, so the Ronskian is equal to a e to the minus log t, which is equal to a e to the log t to the minus 1, which is equal to a over t, right? So the Ronskian is equal to a over t, and we'll uh, we'll ring that in red because we'll need that. Now the Ronskian is also equal to the determinant of the two sol solutions to equation one. Well, we only know one solution, and we don't know the other. So what we do is. Um, I'll uh, I'll use blue here. So we write down one of the solutions, which is um, t. Let me have a look and see uh, what. Yeah, x equals t is one of the solutions. So we write down one of the solutions, t there, and we write down the other solution, which is x sub two. We don't know what that is, because if you think about it, um, that's our x1, x, our x1 
uh, equals t. Uh, so now um, we're calling our second solution x2. So if we, if we differentiate t, we get 1. Uh, let's, let's stick to the color blue. So if we differentiate t with respect to t, we get 1. Then if we differentiate x2, we get x2 prime. And so that's equal to, well, you multiply the t by the x2 prime, and you multiply the x2 by the 1. So what we get is, if we return to the color blue, is t times x2 prime minus x2 times 1, which is just x2. Um, <clears throat> Now, uh, this is our this is the determinant of this um, kind of matrix thing here. Um, so, um, what we notice is that if W is equal to this and W is equal to A over T, then we can equate this with this. So what we get is, um, just let me get rid of the stylus, um, and let's write in green again. So, t times dx2 by dt minus x2 is equal to a over t, right? And we we'll call that equation 3. Now, let's bring the stylus back because I'm going to cut and paste equation three. And we're going to go on to a new page. Right, so now what we do is we divide throughout by t. So we've got dx2 over dt minus one over t x2 equals a over t squared, and we'll call that equation 4. So to solve this equation 4, we find an integrating factor, and this is equal to e to the power minus the log of 1 over t, and it's negative because that's negative 1 over t. And of course, we put a dt in there, and that's equal to e to the minus log t, which is equal to e to the log t to the minus 1, which is equal to t to the minus 1, which is the same as 1 over t. So now we multiply equation 4 by 1 over t. So we get 1 over t dx2 by dt minus 1 over t squared x2 equals a over t cubed. Now, this gives rise, I'm writing, I'm going to um, move here on this part of the uh, screen uh, to save space. So, um, the left-hand side here can be written as, and I'll change colour again, um, can be written as d by dt of, well, <coughs> excuse me. First of all, in the brackets, we write down the 1 over t. 1 over t, and then we write down the x2. Right? And that's equal to a, and I'm going to write the a over t cubed as a t to the minus 3, because it's easier to integrate. Um, so, um, if you differentiate all of this out again, you will get this because you've got 1 over t times the derivative of x2 uh, plus the derivative of 1 over t, which is minus 1 over t squared, which we've got over here, times x2. So that is correct. And that's equal to a t. Uh, to the power minus 3. Now let's cut that. 
and move on to a new page. Uh, there we are. Just ignore that little bit of that black mark at the top there. So we can proceed to solve this equation. So what we get on the left hand side is 1 over t x2 equal to a times the integral of t to the minus 3 dt. And that's equal to a times t to the minus 2 over minus 2 plus another constant of integration. So we've got 1 over t x2 equal to b over minus 2 t to the minus 2 plus b. And in fact, I'm going to write that t to the minus 2 as 1 over t squared. So it's actually b over minus 2 t squared plus b. And that's equal to 1 over tx2. So now we can simplify the equation by multiplying through uh, by t. So we've got x2 equal to, uh, and if we multiply t by the right hand side, uh, by the way, I've made an, a mistake there, haven't I? I don't know how I make these mistakes, but I do. That's an a, so a constant a over minus 2t squared plus b. So if we multiply the right hand side by t, we get a over minus 2t plus bt, right? So let's just cut and paste that. Okay, so we've got x2 equals a over minus 2t plus bt because we've just multiplied throughout both sides by t. And that's basically our second uh, linearly independent solution. Now, um, we know, we know that x1 is equal to, and I have to look at this because I've actually forgotten, I can't remember. Um, so yeah, x1 equals t. We know that x1 equals t. Uh, so the general solution The general solution is, um, well, first of all, we've got this on uh, for, for, for the, the second solution. So I'll write it down as bt minus a over 2t plus ct. So we're in, that, that is essentially the second solution. So that was a particular solution, x1 equals c. Um, when you include it in the general solution, you get another constant in front of it. So x, x, the general solution um, is x of t equal to bt minus a over 2t plus ct. And this can be rewritten as x of t equals uh, b plus c times t, so we're collecting this term and this term together uh, and factorising out the t minus a over 2t. And we can just tidy that a little bit more, write it more tidily as um, what well, we just call b plus c, c1, t and a as c2 over 2t. I'm going to leave the 2t in there because that's important uh, for the reasons that I'm going to explain now. So this is basically our general solution.
right? General solution. Now, I want to prove to you that minus C2 over 2T is also a linearly independent solution of the original ordinary differential equation, which um, I'm going to cut and paste again. So let's just, um, when I can find my nib, right? So let's let's cut and paste that equation, add to new page, and we'll put it there. And just let me uh, find out uh, what that solution is again. So we've got minus C2 over 2T. So we know that our second linearly independent solution is C2 over 2T. And I think it's minus, isn't it? So if we differentiate x2, uh, well, what does that become? Well, if we differentiate x2, we get um, C2 over 2. Uh, that's equal to minus C2 over 2 t to the minus 1. So we've got a minus C2 over 2 t squared term. Um, and then our x2 double prime term is, uh, well, this could be rewritten as minus C2 over 2 t to the minus 2. So that becomes minus a minus 2 c2 over 2 uh, t to the minus 3 so x2 double prime equals c2 over t cubed right so what we want and i've written in red so i'll have to change color now what we want to substitute back into equation one is that uh, that and that right so what we've got is we'll write the coefficients of the equation down first so we've got a t squared that's that t squared and we're multiplying it by the second derivative which is c2 over t cubed so we'll change um to red again so we've got c2 over t cubed plus, um, well, I ought to really have that as black, uh, plus a t times x prime. Well, the x prime is minus c2 over 2t squared. So we've got c2 over 2t squared. And we'll change back to black again. So we've got minus x. Well, minus x is just minus a minus c2 over 2t. Right? And uh, I think I made a mistake because x prime is minus c2 over 2t squared. So we should have a minus sign in there as well. So uh, and I should have written this in red, but I didn't, but never mind. So that's equal to, um, well, let's just write in black for now. So the t squared cancels with the t cubed, leaving c2 over t, c2 over t. Uh, the t cancels with the t squared, leaving minus c2 over 2t. And we've got a minus... Uh, yeah, so uh, what have we got? Uh, that's minus C2 over 2T. Um, and I think I've made a mistake because, uh, let me just have a look. So X2 is minus C2 over 2T. 
Uh, that's a plus, but that should actually be a minus. Uh, so I've made um, probably made a mistake somewhere. Um, I think it would work better if x2 was equal to a plus so that uh, we get a minus. Ah, wait a minute. Do I see my mistake? That should be a plus and that should be a plus. And I think one of those should be a plus. And so that should be a minus. Because if we differentiate that again, uh, we get this. Yeah, that's correct. So I, I got some minus signs wrong. Uh, many apologies. So in actual fact, what we've got is minus C2 over T plus C2 over T plus C2 over T. And that is equal to minus C2 over T plus C2 over T, which is zero, as required. So we know that X2 is equal to minus C2 over T, if you like. Um, I know the X2 that we worked out incorporated the first solution as well, uh, but never mind about that. Uh, let's just go to the final solution and so as you can see we have x of t equals c one t minus c two over two t and that is a general solution of the original differential equation so i hope uh, that's been okay uh, do come back watch more of my videos and um uh, let me know of any issues in the comments and um, until next time, I'll bid you farewell for now and see you soon. Okay, bye.